Hi, it's Mike Vulcan here with another video. I'm from Freelancer Masterclass Lead Instructor. And today we're going to be talking about how to get freelancing projects in digital marketing. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, right there or right there, wherever the subscribe button is. Be sure to click it. Now, many of you are saying, who have followed me, saying, Mike, you're a digital marketer. Why would you do a video encouraging others to get clients? Isn't that adding to your competition? And for that, I say, no way. There's tons of money to be made in digital marketing, way more than I could ever make. So by me teaching you the tricks of the trade isn't me increasing uh, my competition. It's helping others, which is the fundamental reason why I started Freelancer Masterclass. Above all else, I always use that as a decision maker. Will this help my students? Will this help my audience? It's much like how Google and Amazon have grown. Every decision they make is for the benefit of their users. Now, they may have gotten lost in their way along the way, and especially Google. Um, but all in all, that's how they got so popular is that every decision they made, is this the best in the best interest of our users? Okay, and you as a freelancer should, should have that same philosophy, but it's so much easier said than done. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how to get freelancing projects in digital marketing. First thing I want you to do is determine what you want to sell. Okay. You're not just selling SEO and this goes for any industry, designers, copywriters. You're not just selling design work. You're not just selling copywriting. You're selling backlinking SEO. You're selling logo design. You're selling blog copywriting for clothing e-commerce companies, right? You're not just selling logo design. You're selling logo design for wineries. All right. I want you to keep niching down. Don't think that you can niche too much because there are countless multi-million dollar opportunities out there for niches and sub niches and sub sub niches so get as specific as you can possibly get and then i want you to determine your ideal client so you have exactly what you want to sell then determine who you want to sell to and this is so important many people skip over this ad ah, don't worry about it i know i know what i'm selling let me go out and do it really if you determine your ideal client this is going to be a thousand times easier okay who is their, uh, what is their job title? Who do they work for? What location do they work in? Just the United States? If it is just the United States, one particular part of the United States, uh, do they only work in um, suburban areas or industrial areas? Um, big company or small? You know, if they're a big company, how big? If they're a small company, how small? You know, under 1 million in revenue, under 10 million in revenue, what's small to you? Okay, and then what problems do they have that you can solve specifically, but even not, you know, what problems do they have? It's important for you to know that because if you, if you know what problems they have as a whole and not just what you can solve, you have cross selling opportunities there. Okay. And then how do they consume content? All right. So, um, do they strictly watch YouTube? Um, do they watch YouTube only for instructional content and then, um, usually subscribe to newsletters, you know, blog content. Do they listen to podcasts? This is all information you can get. There's lots of ways to do market research, and this goes beyond the scope of this this project. Just type in how to do market research or uh, market research market research on the cheap or something DIY market research. You'll see lots of companies we can send surveys to your ideal clientele, and you know it's just a small fee, but you're getting countless uh, in, uh, countless data. Uh, that would really help you, or priceless data, I guess is a better way to say it than countless. You get priceless data that will help you uh, determine your ideal client and what kind of content they consume, what they eat for breakfast, all anything you could possibly get data that's to your advantage because data is success, especially in a service industry like freelancers. Okay, so now I want you to get a website. Now, one that represents you and the clients you want to take on. So, for example, if you want higher ticket clients and you have a site that looks like this one here displayed on the screen, forget about it, okay? This is a garbage site. It looks like it was built in 1980. Uh, this isn't of a freelancer, but it's just an example of a typical layout and the buttons are old school. The colors don't go together. Gradient phases from the 90s. I mean, it's like really, really bad. Um, and if you want higher ticket clients, the first step is the foundation of your whole marketing. Where you're gonna be driving all your traffic to is your website. If that looks like garbage or at least doesn't match the type of persona that you're trying to bring in, then there's going to be a mismatch there. Okay. Now I want you to get on freelancing platforms. It's easy picking in many cases, especially if you have a good profile, Upwork, freelancer.com, guru, 
Fiverr, which is becoming popular, but I have learned to definitely not like Fiverr. Um, not recommended. There's many others. Just type in freelancing platform and then even in, include your your uh, industry. Um, so if you're a designer, you'll have access to so many um, freelancing platforms that other uh, uh, industries don't have access to. So um, 99 Designs, for example, Crowdspring, there's a whole bunch of other design platforms that are specifically just for freelancers and writers. Okay. Um, get a funnel. So many people skip over this because number one, you have to know about marketing, which you really you kind of do, but you don't. You can make it better with marketing, but you don't have to know marketing. Um, a funnel is basically a way to target your ideal clients online through paid ads and then bring them into a landing page and have a follow-up system. So let me walk you through this. Um, let's go back. So the first steps were determine your ideal, uh, determine who you want to sell to and then determine your ideal client, right? So that goes here. Once you can determine who you want to target to and what your service is, you can create a Facebook ad or a Google ad. So you determine your target, you know, who do you want to, the ads to show to, and then the ads in terms of what you're selling. You know, that's exactly what these two steps are. Okay. So you set up these ads, they're driving targeted traffic. Yes, you're paying per click. Don't be cheap. Spend a, spend a few hundred dollars, even a couple thousand. Oh, it seems, Mike, I'm just getting started on a couple thousand. Do whatever you can to save up for it. A hundred percent of your profits from your first client should go to this. Now you're bringing exact targeted clients and it's not to your homepage, it's to a very specific service that you sell. Let me give you an example. I'm a marketing strategist, okay? Um, I had an idea that I wanted to sell this particular service to uh, a lead generation service to insurance um, adjusters, insurance brokers. So I came up with this very specific four-step process that I would say I would do to them. And I went on Facebook and, I, and Google and I created ads specifically targeting insurance brokers. And I gave it a name and I productized this service and I created a landing page. So basically the Facebook ad says, hey, do you want more leads for your insurance agency? Yes. Okay. Well then click here. And then the landing page says to generate leads for your insurance agencies, do this, this, and this, by the way, if you don't know how to do this or you don't want to do this, hire me, I'll do it for you. Now I do a lot of different types of marketing strategy, but this particular landing page talked only about this particular problem that I was trying to get them to solve, or I was trying to solve for my clients, I guess is a better way to say it. So they set this up and I made it very expensive. So um, it was a $10,000 product and it's, and there it was actually a $5,000 upgrade. So it could, they could spend at least $15,000. All right. So basically it landed to, to this webinar. They signed up for it. I got their email address and then I created this follow-up system. Very simple follow-up system. Mailchimp.com free. Okay. Up to 2000 contacts. So they would all go into Mailchimp. They get this three-part um, uh, drip email that was timed every day. They would get another quick tip for me on how to generate leads. And again, I would remind them that this service is available for them for a limited time only for $10,000. Okay. I generated so much business out of that. It was more than most freelancers make in one year. I did it in two weeks, two and a half weeks. Okay. And I talk about this more in detail at freelancer masterclass on, on the class called local domination. Um, but you can do that. Uh, this could be a local um, program you're running for like restaurants in the area. I know a freelancer does this for restaurants in the area, something similar, uh, or you could do it, you know, local being the United States, whatever. Okay, but get yourself a funnel because you can rely on that for consistent traffic. Imagine the power that you can have if you know that you spend $1 in ads and bring in $5 in revenue. You can do that nonstop all day and you could scale to infinity if you wanted to. Okay. Um, now, create and stick to goals. Without knowing goals, without having data, it's like getting in a car with nowhere to drive. So if you look at, there's a Harvard study that found that 14% uh, of the people who have goals are 10 times more successful than those without goals. All right. And the 3% with written goals are three times more successful than the 14% with unwritten goals. So be sure to get yourself not just goals, not just say, hey, I want to make $100,000 here, but write it down and have a strategy. Well, break it down. So for, here's an example. How much do you want to make? $100,000 in salary. For some reason, that's like the magic number that people want to make $100,000. Honestly, you can make way more than that as a freelancer if you put your mind to it. And um, especially as a digital marketer, because there's some really great money in digital marketing. But if let's just say $100,000, that's really only $8,333 a month. That's not that hard. Um, that might seem hard to you right now, depending on where you're at in your career. But believe me, if you do what I say in this video, it's not hard at all. Um, there's something bastardly wrong with what you've done on one of these previous steps if you can't make that money. Um, now, if you think about that, that's just nine, nine clients a month paying you $1,000. Now, you should be able to retain a client as a digital marketer for six months or more no matter what kind of uh, product you're selling or service you're selling. So really, if you can't get nine clients out of the 
millions of people, companies out there, millions of people, millions of companies that need digital marketing services that are willing to pay $1,000 a month for services. You can't get nine of them. Then again, something is wrong with your messaging, your setup, your brand, something. So I want you to take a hard look at each one of those steps, but you should be able to make a hundred thousand dollars in salary really easily if you follow whatever steps that I had outlined in this video and in freelancer masterclass. Okay. So, uh, good luck to you. And this hope this video was very helpful in terms of getting freelance projects in digital marketing.